experienced in practice, in reality, is the uh, vibration due to promoting expectation. For example, when we have a car, we have the wheel, and the wheel is excited by the road, and the road can be modeled as a means to provide the harmonic excitation. So, with all of this, and the doubling equation we have, as the form of this, and the excitation we normally say, harmonic excitation is F0 cosine The mathematically, means that we would like to have a solution of this uh, governing equation. There are basically three means to get the solution, and that are completely described in the handout. So I ask you to read handout carefully so that you can understand the basic three means to get the solution of this kind of equation. Okay? Three ways typically to get the solution of this equation. And I ask you to be quite familiar with at least one of the ways to get the solution. Okay. And then understand the other two ways. In such a way to support uh, your ways to get the solution. I'm not asking you to you have to be familiar with the all these three ways to get the solution. But you may like to use, for example, geometric or phaser or diagram to understand the solution. Or you may want to, you may like to uh, get the solution by using uh, sine and cosine. Or you may like to use complex notation. At least the one, one way you have to completely understand and you can so you can solve any equation that has this kind of form without difficulty. Okay? So assuming that you are familiar with the one ways of solving that equation, I'd like to introduce you to some typical example of how many equation. So the example one is the basic excitation case. Suppose we are sitting in a car over here, and due to the vibration of the car, I feel some vibration. And I do model that such kind of vibration as like this. I have Excitation, base excitation that I measure the line, and I do have an interest of vibration myself. That's T. And those X and Y is measured with respect to inertial coordinate that is fixed on the ground. That is not relative displacement. Okay. Therefore, the governing equation I can get from this model would be like this. M uh, x dot uh, t x dot minus y dot plus k x dot minus y equal to Drawing the body diagram. Assuming that xt is larger than yt, okay, then 
there must be some force that pulls the mass in this direction. Mm-hmm. Oh. I didn't bring all in this time to I all So this is uh, K X minus Y and the C C C X dot minus Y dot and that has to be balanced by the inertial force that must be mx double dot not mx double dot minus y dot dot because as I talked to you x is the measured absolute measure from the ground so the acceleration all the mass has to be mx double dot not mx double dot minus y and I So, this is the Chauvin uh, equation. And then we use, use one of ways of solving this equation. That does not include asking your friend to solve this equation. You have to solve the equation by yourself. Then you get the solution like this. If I do have an interest only on the ratio of the magnitude of the response of the mass with respect to the magnitude of the base excitation. Okay. Meaning that I assume that the response of x is an after x and the sine or cosine and base excitation is capital Y sine or cosine. There must be some phase difference between the response x and y. It can be found by using one of the Then this has to form like this. One minus R square X square. That's two theta R square. And then one plus two theta R square. And that has to be equal. And you must remember that in the previous case, for example, when we have M, K, and the C, when we have the excitation force like this, then we have the form of this. You may look at the text or you may look at your notes or you may look at the handout. The difference is this. Okay. What is the contribution of this? That must somehow express the physics behind our, this model. Okay. Our aim, our purpose is to use this model and to use the governing equation that exactly represent the physics of this model.